just in case you thought Barn Find Hunter was like a, a walk in the park, sleep late, you know, at eight. It's it's not raining, which is a good news, but we're up way before the sun comes up. We're going through Atlanta rush hour traffic. So uh, some of the worst traffic in the world. So I'm hoping that, uh, you know, it'll be worth our while. If you remember in the last episode, we came across a field of cars. Well, that's our next find. Ah, holy mackerel. Owned by an individual, and we didn't know if we'd have permission to look at them. Well, we've since gotten permission to look at them. We have to meet you at 8 o'clock in the morning. It's quarter to 8. When I was in business, the theory was, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. If you're late, you're history. So we're getting there 15 minutes ahead of time. Hopefully we'll beat the owner of those cars and he'll be impressed and give us full access. So we'll see. Here we are. <laughs> this car kind of fits right in. <laughs> I could probably pull the plates off and nobody would know the difference. We were across the street looking at cars, and I happened to look out the window and, and see this field of cars. I said, oh my God, I've got to find out who owns those cars. So I found out that a gentleman named Ron across the street knew the owner, and he put us in touch with Maurice Hove. So Maurice, thanks for coming out here early in the morning. The sun's hardly up. Uh, my pleasure. I don't know if we'll, we'll see the sun today, but who knows? So what, what's, what is your purpose? What are, what are you doing with these cars? Um, these are cars that I'm restoring, trying to bring them back to life. Some of them will never make it because when you start digging, they have a lot of rust in them. And so there are plenty here that I can get one car out of two or three. They're not parts cars. Every one of them starts out as a potential car that can be rebuilt. Really? Now, so you have, I, I see an unusual number of Studebakers, Mercedes, uh... What, 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 why the affiliation or why the infatuation? Oh gosh, my grandfather was a diesel mechanic in Cuba back, he moved from uh, Lithuania to Cuba as a teenager and had a penchant for diesel engines. So he worked on sugar cane plantations in Cuba fixing diesel engines. He was trained by Daimler Benz and then he set up a shop near the University of Havana where he fixed old Mercedes, well, old now, but diesel Mercedes, but way back when, diesel trucks way back when. And from that, we moved to the United States in 1961. At the age of six, I was. He always had a penchant for Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes was imported by Studebaker, so he always loved Studebakers. And then he fell in love with Pontiacs, and I have a few Pontiacs here as well. So I have kind of brought my youth into my adulthood when I could afford to rebuild cars and have restored a whole bunch of uh, AMC Marlins, Studebakers, Pontiacs, and Mercedes-Benz. Isn't that something? Wow. Can we walk around here? How do you acquire cars? Do you ride around back streets and look for them or do you go on eBay or how do you do it? Well, some of it is on eBay. Some of it I have friends around that know I've been doing this for a while and they'll get me vehicles that they think are nice. What you see is a myriad of things that I grew up with. Isn't that so? And then cars of the 60s and 70s because that was my youth. So what was your hot rod as a youth? Oh my God, I had a 71 Super Beetle. First <laughs> car I ever had. So I don't know how many cars you have. Do you know how many cars you have? No. Yeah, well, I don't know. There's gotta be 40 here. Oh, there's probably 70 here. Oh, okay. And then there's another 30 in there, and I've got about almost 50 across the street. Well, then you're over 100. And 15 at home. Might some of these cars be for sale? I mean, to a guy that wants to keep them up and somebody that wants to, you know, enjoy them, yeah, I don't want to give them to somebody to scrap, and I don't want to give them to somebody to trash, because that's just not what I've spent all this time doing this for. Sure, well, there are enthusiasts watching this right now. And, and they're, they're not gonna scrap these cars out. So, well, I don't know, can you just walk us around? Do you know the stories of any of these cars? Oh, quite a few of them. I mean, this yeah. is a 300 SE Mercedes. It's got an air suspension, which makes it great. At the same time, it's the most difficult thing to keep running because it's always falling apart. I actually have one of these in the long style, which is a rare car. There were 2,000 of those built inside that's been restored back to new. 
Oh man. And everything's been done on the car. And that's a pretty rare car. Apparently they were real common in Russia and in East Germany because they were the limousines for the Russian royalty. And so this car is sitting down, that's because the air suspension, the air suspension has failed? has failed. But this car will run if we sit here and tinker with the motor because it's got a mechanical fuel injection. So all you've got to do is wash out the injection, which sits right in here. And this injection device right here is bulletproof and it'll run forever. And that's, I don't know why Mercedes quit making them other than everybody wants to be green. This is a mechanical fuel injection. You clean it out and it runs if the engine runs. So they work great. Now I saw a rare Mercedes over here. Let's take a walk over this. Right. I, you don't see many of these in my lifetime. And I see one here. It's a, I guess a Ponton, maybe a 220 station wagon. Yes. Man, what yes. a, what a rare beast and, that is. And that is a real rare beast. The engine has already been rebuilt. Really? I actually have it in line to restore. This is my only way. These are hard to find. I, I don't think I've I, seen three in my life. I don't think you will. They're old. Man. But this thing, you know, it looks terrible, but there's no Bondo on this or very little. The rust is, this is, this metal is so thick, it doesn't rust away and make crater holes like you do in some of the newer cars. Man. So it's hard to get into, but if you can get in it, it's there. Yeah, neat car, man. Well, the car's complete. So and the keys are in the ignition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, try to steal it. Well, it's all yours. So yes. do you know if this was made by Mercedes or was it done by a body company? This was made by Mercedes and then Benz Benz, which was the company that Mercedes authorized to do these conversions, did it in Germany. And it's got a stamp inside that says Benz Benz, which makes it even more, not rare, but more honest. What color will this be? Green. It will be green. It's okay. the original color. I've checked it with the, uh, the factory codes. Well, folks watching, I know you're going to say, why didn't you ask about that Studebaker? Why didn't you ask about that Marlin? There's so many cars here, we, we could be here for days. So I apologize if we're not talking about the car you're interested in. It's just the way it goes right now. Can you show us in your building? You said you have- I sure can. And if you see here as we're walking in, these are all cars that I have every intention of rebuilding. The car you see here- the Stag. Is a Triumph Stag. That I and that was your about. dad's? This, was the, this car is exactly what my dad's car was, with a stick, with the end, everything. It's a V8 engine on a car that deserves like a four-cylinder. Way too much power, but it, it was really a, an interesting car to drive around. I, I was trying to find a 55, but I couldn't. This is a 56. So it's an oval window. So it's an oval window car. 36 horsepower. As my first car was a VW Super Beetle, so I knew everything about Volkswagens because as a kid, myself and two friends had VWs and we would like pick each other apart with details about the cars nice. and the history of the car and everything else, which was fun. So this has got the magnesium engine block. Yes, it does. Oh. And you know that. You sh I guess you should know that. <laughs> That's all I do is this stuff. I don't watch football, I don't fish. This was like a, a, a Triumph family sedan. And they, I think they came in a wagon and a, and a coupe and a convertible. It was called a, a Herald. If it had a four cylinder engine, and it was called a uh, Vitesse if it had a six-cylinder engine. Correct. And this is the four-cylinder version. Now if, you, if you think about a Triumph Spitfire, it had a flip-up front like this as well. So that was kind of a, in the, uh, a trend for a little while with Triumph. Nice. Look at beautiful. Yeah, no. The nice car, detailing. It's original tire. Everything's right. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, the cars are right. I mean, it's, they may not be worth much, but this one should be worth more than what what, right. Because it's it's correct. You can drive this. You can go anywhere you nice. want. In. So what we're doing here now we have temporary lighting is to show the kind of the level of restoration that Maurice's crew does on these cars. And this has been sitting a while, so everything that can oxidize is going to oxidize. But every panel in here has been restored, and it's got a little bit of dust and dirt on it mm -hmm. that you see. But this engine was completely rebuilt. Everything in here is. Back to factory specs. That's a gas car. Yes, this is a gasoline car. Uh -huh. Mercedes panel back there that they put, and then they put, why they had that panel there, I don't know, but I guess it was for aesthetics. Mm -hmm. But if you can see, we powder coated the inside of the, oh, yeah. underneath here, just to keep it clean. If you can look in here, you can see the interior. I don't know if they Beautiful. can. Beautiful, look at that carpet. So I, I wish you guys watching this at home could smell the leather coming out of this interior. It's, it's beautiful and it smells like brand new. Very nice. So all these cars that are sitting, they never, there's, there's never a moment you stop. You're always fixing, fixing, fixing. Continuously fixing. What's fixed gets put away. 
and then something else goes in line. So can you show us across the street? Yes, I'd be happy to. That sounds to. intriguing. So the yard full of cars in the building we were just at is just 200 feet away. Now we're on the other side of the road where he's got other cars outdoors and a collection indoors. And what I pointed to him to here was this 300 SEL 6.3. This is a 69. This car was sitting in East Lansing, Michigan in a garage, not garage, something like outside this woman's farm. The car was a rust bucket. It was ter terrible. It's back mint original condition. The suspend this is an air suspension car like you saw with the cars over there. This car stays up. It is a beautiful vehicle. This car is a favorite for the Europeans. It's a great car to cruise at 150 interior? miles an hour. Navy interior? Navy interior, all redone. You probably still smell the leather. And I, I actually will drive this car around because it completely works. But how old is this car? Oh, 69, so you're looking at... A... 50 years old, yeah. 51 years old. Now this... That's Mercedes. <laughs> oh, so this is a museum. Well, it's sort of like a museum. Sort of like a museum. I mean, this is an SL that's completely restored. If you look at this car, it's been completely removed. New panels put in it. They rust back here. They rust back there. They rust in the back. This is a brand new car, like it came off the factory line. Do you take before and after photos? I used to. I don't do it anymore. If people don't believe me, it doesn't matter. You can get in here with anything you want, scratch the paint. Do it. Yeah, You'll yeah. see that there's no Bondo. So the 390 Machine Rebel? This is a 390 Machine Rebel. I have been searching for these for about four to five years. This one came out of South Dakota. Oh, this is the real thing. This is AMC The Machine, 1970. So this was... This is a special car. This was Rambler's muscle car. Back when, you know, Boss 302 Fords and SS Chevelles, Rambler had to come up with something, and they put a 390 in this car. Jeez. And this car is original, and it is beautiful. This is the standard version. Mm -hmm. But it's still, it's in great shape. And even the, the red, white, blue console. Correct. <laughs> and everything is yeah. correct. This is original paint and everything. We've been through this. I just got this car. I've been hunting this car. I don't know if it had a sunroof, but it looks to me like it did because you can see where they oh, yeah. got water underneath. Well, we'll fix that. That's no problem. Let's just, and it won't go back with Bondo. It'll yeah, go back yeah, with yeah. metal. This thing here is the, the, the rare this. of all the cars. Wow. This is a Jensen GT, and it's got a Lotus engine, which all Jensen's had. And this car is completely restored, all new interior, all new leather, everything done to new. And you know again, what? You see one or two of these in your lifetime. Yes, Jeez. if you're lucky. Man. If and, you're, and, they, and they won't look like this. And two more stags. That's the, that's the stag like my father had when I was a kid. What color did he have? Oh, he had magenta. Oh. If you wanted to look at the engine, this has been completely overhauled and redone. Again, air conditioning, but this car came standard from the factory with air conditioning, which is kind of neat. But this, this car we rebuilt. So how many Marlins do you have? Four. Hmm. Marlin, just so uh, you know, when, when Ford came out with a fastback Mustang, and uh, actually there was a Plymouth Barracuda that was a fastback as well, Rambler had to do something. And so they, they took a, a, a Rebel, sedan like that or that and they molded on this fastback roof and you know arguably it was the better looking of the cars it's gorgeous and and often they had a very dramatic two-tone paint scheme to them uh, where they painted the center section one color and the outer rest of the body another color they're they're pretty fabulous styling statements and and one other thing that's critical about this car is the guy that owned the that owned amc or the president of amc wanted to be able to sit in the back seat and be able to see the road from the back seat. He was a tall man, so he has stadium seating. If you look at the back seat, it's about <laughs> three inches or four inches taller than the front seat, which is why you get the extended roof line because most other cars would start chopping here, right? True. Now, take, you gotta take a look at the back here, too, how, how kind of nice, nicely this flows into the back of the car. Yeah, this one's getting some peel in the paint because of its age, but you can see the way it was designed. Yeah. And it really is beautiful. Yeah, it really is. If I took them all away and I said you could have one back, which would it be? My favorite car is the car I drive every day, which is a brand new Mercedes <laughs> okay. four-door big tank. Okay. Of all of these, my favorite is probably that right there. Stag. Yeah. Because it has the most memories, the most fun, the most enjoyment. 
You don't have your dad's. Girls in the front seat, you know, that kind of stuff when you yeah. were a kid. So it, it brings it back. So it's interesting that, you know, here you're a surgeon. Actually, we've, in all the four, five years we've done this program, nobody's ever worn a tie on it. So this is a first. I have to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> but you're here, you're a surgeon, and yet you hire surgeons to, to, to work on your patients, which are all right here and across the street. Doc, I want to thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, well, I man. I appreciate it. Thank you, and I hope safe travels to you in your travels around the world. And, you know, I know this is a private collection of yours. Thanks so much for sharing it. Oh, my pleasure. Met, met a, a cool few guys, the owner of these cars and the guys that work on them, and really saw such a diverse uh, variety of conditions between cars sitting over here waiting to be restored and the cars over there under plastic covers that have been restored they do nice work uh, this guy sure has a passion for this type of cars we have a lead on a guy who's got some uh, imported cars none of which are for sale but I think all of which are interesting that have been part of his life for a long time uh, here again it's the story Well, I'm, I'm with, uh, I guess, an ultimate enthusiast, Tom. We've spoken on the phone, and I had never met Tom before, but he just told me about some of the cars in his garage and kind of what he did for a living. And I just thought, wow, this, this is an enthusiast I'd like to come and visit. So if you'd walk us around, I'd just yeah. like to see some of these things. Okay, let's, uh, let's head down this way. So you said you were once in the, in the Porsche and Volkswagen repair business? Yep, yep. We had a repair shop in Roswell. You probably passed it uh, oh. for... 15 years. Are you a self-taught? Yes, yes, yep, self-taught. Uh, I have a perfect degree in business management. <laughs> from, <laughs> you know, oh, so, look at this. Whoa. So, uh, wow. So. All right, so I got to know, like, tell me the story about this. Peeling paint and all. It's a 57 Speedster and... Uh, and, and this is real, folks. <laughs> this is metal. Wow. Yeah, this is, there's some plastic on it, you know, from accidents and racing, you know, and uh, it was, um, I've owned it 50 years. I bought it in 70, yep. And, and uh, you were 22, so oh, really? 22 or so, yep. Wow. But people, like you said, uh, people, even then, uh, the speedsters were, as a teenager, late teenager, speedsters were, to us, uh, iconic. I mean, they were... They had that same feeling they have today. They were inexpensive, but everybody still desired them. You know, it wasn't, it, it was, oh, you have a Speedster? You know, it was like that. And it's the same way today. And very few cars maintained that from the point of manufacture until this point. There's very, it, in my opinion. And this was a race car? This was a race car, SCCA e-production car. Did you race it? Uh, I've, I've raced in solo one events, but not in any road racing, but when I bought it, it had e-production here. <laughs> numbers were on the doors, no windshield, uh, no glass in the headlights, and no Nerf bars. Uh, same roll bar. These are the original seats. Man. Right here, Speedster seats that are original. Uh, this is the original paint here, and the door jams, et cetera, original paint. And this, you can see, is the original paint. It's been repainted. It was, it was repainted in 67, and now the lacquer is just chipping off it so it's going to stay pretty much the way it is this car won the tw in its class won the 12 hour marlboro or six hour and i don't remember which it was in 63 whoa and bruce jennings co-drove it with the owner dick scarborough and uh and george fry was a well-known driver out of bethlehem pennsylvania i commend you for leaving it like this because now it's kind of hip to have a car with patina. Well, it wasn't. But all the years yeah. you owned it, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. But this car really has gone downhill paint-wise in the last five years. So it stayed really, really nice for a long time. But now it's, uh, you know, so you'll see various little things. And there's probably, there's a, the pan is, is all good, as you can see, you know. And, uh, that, and that's never been monkey. No. Wow. No, this is, these, and these are original, too. You can see here where this is. You know, peeling up a little bit here. How many uh, miles are this? Well, it it shows fifty five thousand, but uh, this uh, 
I, I think this is original mileage. This isn't the original tack. Everybody used Carrera tack. So this is an 8,000 RPM tack. Ah. Okay, th and this is a Carrera, uh, this is a Carrera instrument cluster. So the oil temperature is in numbers here, uh -huh. not in just uh, a position. Yep. And it still has, the, this is the, I think the original mileage is 50, whatever it is, 50 some thousand, but it's 120 mile an hour speedo. So that was the correct ah. speedo. The Carrera would have been 160 mile an hour speedo if it was a Carrera. So whoever, somebody took one of these out of a wreck and put it in here yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah. or bought it from the dealer. This is a, this is a 19, this roll bar was probably 63, <laughs> 62, you know? Right. So uh, uh, it, it has disc brakes on it. Full, uh, four wheel? Yep, these are C model Porsche disc brakes, which they were allowed to uh, okay, upgrade. So therefore, the smaller bolt. Smaller circle. bolt pattern, right? Any 911 wheel will fit on this, or you know, yep, bolt yep. pattern wise. Mm -hmm. So they were upgraded. They allowed them to upgrade, I think, in '65. So these would have had okay, yeah. drum brakes. It would have had Carrera front brakes, which were 60 millimeter, you know. And so this is the same engine. Uh, it it had short gears in it. It has still has short gears in it which we changed them. I mean, we changed them every race, you know, so we changed the gear. Is this motor stock? No, no, this is the racing motor. This, this is the motor that was in the car. Uh, it's got Solex everything, everything but the Webers. Webers. Yeah, these, this car, when it was raced, had the Zenith carburetors and they were bored and there were no Venturis. So it wouldn't run under 2650, 2700 RPM because there was no negative, it, you had to have the velocity to inspirate the fuel. So I had another car that, uh, we had a hill climb car, a VW, and we ran, I picked these carburetors up, which are very unusual. They're 46 millimeters off a, uh, 46 IDMs off a Abarth Carrera. <laughs> and they only made, a, wow. didn't make many of them. I, ha I came across those and so we ran those on our hill climb car, and I put them on here just so I could drive the car, you know. I'll show it to you here. This is the motor that we ran, competed with in hill climbs. This was the VW. Holy mackerel. So we competed in a modified class, and um, there's those carburetors on there. So we had excellent gears. We had no money. And, uh, <laughs> excellent so, gears and no money. Yeah, we had excellent <laughs> gears and no money. And uh, so this started out full bodied car and it's an oval window and uh, we just kept <laughs> modifying it because there were no rules in that class, it was under two liter. So we ran basically a 356 running gear, same as in that car, and, uh, and we cut the weight down to 1200 pounds, 1100 pounds, so. Cool stuff, man, well, let's see what else you got. Yep. Do you wanna hear this thing run? Let me fire this thing up, guys. Pretty much it. it sounds man. pretty darn healthy. Yeah, How many it, miles you figure you put on this? I put uh, six thousand miles on it. Since you bought it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, you had patience. Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Yep, that's where it came from. Yep. So it was originally blue. Well, no, no. Yeah. It was originally salmon, the coral red. Oh. Yep. This is the original. This yeah. is the original color. Okay, so then it went to blue and back to, then back to this yeah, color. Yeah, or, or that may be a primer even. I don't oh, know if I you see. look at it close, you know. Boy, this thing hums. Yeah, is that 36? It, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, sweet. Yeah, it's, it's, I've fixed a couple things on it, but I mean, I've been building, I mean, I've been building these motors since I was 13, you know, so it's all, I, cu I cut these off, these were, but, the preheaters, but right. the preheaters, but I'll fix that here one of these days. But but it goes down the road. Original transmission, obviously the original. Oh, you know. Do you you drive this? Yeah, yeah. We can go down the road and yeah, take it down the road. It runs. I take it to the car shows with Steve. You can see it's been repainted, but 
but it's I don't know whether I don't know what the blue. Yeah. I don't know. You know, maybe they painted a blue. So how long do you have this? Thirty years. Yeah, I've had it thirty years. Yep. Thirty Local years. Local car to here. Ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, Chapel Hill. Okay, yeah. you did you go up to North Carolina to buy it? Yep. 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 How, how'd you find out about it? Um. My brother uh, saw it. He knew I was look. I was looking for one to kind of match the. Uh, the Speedster, the 57. <laughs> so he he saw it and it was in a shop. He had a number and a price on it. And uh, I called him up and he told me the car ran. Everything was good. The horn works, turn signals. So, nice. Yeah, it's a so, good. So a Bimmer. That's a uh, 73. Small bump around taillight. My wife bought it brand new, so. Wow. Yeah, it's got 130, roughly 130,000. Wow. Yeah, the original paint? No, it's been hit. Uh, that's the original paint. It was hit here. A lady hit her on her back, so a good local guy straightened it. Straightened it. So, uh, and it's it's got the paint starting to go too, but it's the same as it, that car. But and you still drive this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. It's going. Uh, it needs a few things I need to fix on it, but um, it's got a five-speed uh, metric mechanic five-speed that you put in. Yes, I put that in there. It has the original motor. The head's never been off the motor. Yeah, yeah. So what's your story with this uh, single cab here? Just, uh, just basically it, what you got, man. That's what it is. There's no, just had it since 1980. So I've had it a long 40 time. 40 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so just, you drive it ever? Yeah, uh-huh, I do. Yeah, it doesn't look like it, but I do. No, I drive it. I'm trying to drive it more. I'm trying to drive everything more like ever, all of us, you know, so. I mean, it's solid. Yeah, there's some things that need to be repaired on it, but it's solid. Yep. And, uh, and this is what year? That's a 68, 68, first bay window. First bay window. So 67 earlier was a split. Okay. Yeah, split. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really appreciate you spending the time. This was really cool. Okay. So uh, this is an ultra enthusiast, by the way, a lifelong ultra car enthusiast. You, you seldom meet guys like this in your life, and I'm happy I have. Thank you. Thank you, man. Five years ago, somebody at Haggerty had the idea of coming out with a program about finding old cars. Would there be anybody interested in watching a show like that? Well, apparently so, because we've just reached a, mail, uh, a milestone. We've just passed one million subscribers to the ha Haggerty channel on YouTube. They say the first million is the toughest. The next milestone is 10 million. Tell your friends to subscribe, and we'll see how fast we can get to the 10 million mark. Happy hunting.